If you are visiting the old city of Jerusalem and you want to see the special places, then this video is for you. All visitors to the old city will go to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Wailing Wall, uh, Via Dolorosa. But now I'm going to show you some special places that most tourists don't find. Most people don't know it, also Israelis don't know it, but there is another part of the Wailing Wall. The Wailing Wall we know today is only one seventh of the whole Wailing Wall. And inside the Muslim quarter, there is another part, and you can say that it is even holier because it is closer to Kodesh Kodeshim, to, the, to where the temple stood. So let's go there. So this is it, the small Wailing Wall. The Muslims that lived here didn't want the Jews to come here, so they built a toilet. And this is the building that you go through to come here. Today it is, of course, not in use. I like this place for a couple of reasons. As I said, this part is closer to the middle of the Temple Mount, so we are closer to Kodesh Kodashim, Holy of Holies, the heart of the Temple. Another reason is that the big Wailing Wall Plaza that you see today is very new. For hundreds of years, there was only a small alley next to the Wailing Wall, and only after 1967, they made the big plaza by removing all the houses that were next to the Wailing Wall. But if you want to have the feeling of how it was to see the Wailing Wall for hundreds of years, here you can get this feeling. And the most important reason why I like this place so much is that the Wailing Wall today is an open-air synagogue. So there is a separation between men and women. And here, men and women can be together next to the holiest place for the Jews. The most known unknown place in the old city of Jerusalem is where I'm standing right now, the roof of the Austrian hospice. It's right next to station number three in the Via Dolorosa. You need to press the button and then they open the wooden door and it's a European island in the middle of the Muslim quarter. You can pay five shekels and go up to this beautiful rooftop. The next place I want to show you is not a place but an unique family tradition that is carried on by Vasim Razuk. We are a family that has been doing tattoos for the past 700 years. 500 of the 700 is in the Holy Land. My family is Coptic. We come from Egypt, uh, where tattooing is a, um, is a practice. Copts get a small cross tattoo on their wrist, so my family were doing this back in Egypt. And when 500 years ago they came to the Holy Land, they um, discovered that there was already a tradition of tattooing pilgrims in the Holy Land, and so they continued doing this here. Um, so for 500 years, for the past 500 years, we've been doing pilgrimage tattoos uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, it's been in the family for, uh, for all this time. Uh, it's passed down from father to son. Uh, we're 27 generations, 26, 27 generations of doing this. The longest tattooing uh, family or the longest tattooing business in the world, actually. Most travelers pass through the Armenian quarter on the way to the Jewish quarter, but in the heart of the Armenian quarter stand an interesting cathedral. Two gems are buried inside, the Apostle James the Great, that his head is buried here and his body made its way to Santiago de Compostela, Spain, and James the Just, the brother of Jesus, that was the first bishop of Jerusalem. The church is only open for half an hour, between 3 and 3.30, Monday to Saturday. It is from the 12th century, but it was built on a ruins of a church from the 6th century. The Armenians were the first nation to convert to Christianity in the year 301, but most of the Armenians that live today in Jerusalem arrived here after the Armenian Genocide in 1915. Some of the sites that um, I've shown you in this video are really hard to find. Other sites like this one you can easily miss without realizing that you are on it. 
In the 70s, when Israel was renovating the facilities in the old city of Jerusalem, they did some excavation and found this Byzantine street, so 1,500 years old street. And what they did, instead of just covering it, they brought it up to street level. So today, when you walk here, you're basically walking on a 1,500 years old street. Okay, guys, so I've shown you a couple of special places. Now I want to show you some special shops. Most of the shops in the old city sell the same things, but I want to show you some really special places that um, I think might interest you. And I will start with the Leah Photoshop. My name is Kevork Kahvejan. I'm an Armenian. What you see here is a shop that belonged to my father. We have a collection of more than 3,500 pictures. Part of it was done by my father, 1924 and that. And part of it, my collection of other photographers from 1860 up to today. Uh, in these pictures, you see the everyday life, not only in Jerusalem, in the whole country, from north to south nearly. My father came to this country in 1920. He was a survivor of the Armenian genocide. At the age of five, he lost nearly 150 of his family members. So after the genocide, the American missionaries they collected around 100,000 Armenian orphans, took them out of Turkey and dispersed them all around the Middle East. My father was in the group that they brought to Nazareth. The orphanage was in Nazareth. You can say it's fake. One of his teachers in the orphanage, an Armenian, was a photographer. So my father, at the age of 14, was holding a camera. That's how he started the photography. At the age of 16, they said, you've grown up, you have to leave the orphanage. He, so he comes to Jerusalem from Nazareth and starts working as a photographer. He was doing so well that until 1948, he had three photography shops on Jaffa Road. To make it short, in 1987, my wife and I, we are cleaning the attic and find these boxes of negatives. So I asked my father, what's this? He said, oh, negatives, we don't need it, put it aside. Today it's my business. My name is Amukala Bilal. I am the third generation of fabric. We import from three famous countries of textile, which is Damascus, Syria, also Morocco and India. Uh, my fabric is more traditional for you know, uh, lady dresses, men dresses, also for the three religious, what they wear, and some unique things you, know, you don't find it in another place. Now you still bring from Damascus? Uh, Syria, four years we don't receive nothing, but we have still in stock a little bit. But we hope uh, in the future to have uh, uh, news about the peace of uh, Syria and we go back to bring from Syrian fabric. Well, St. Mark Street meets Chabad Street. You can go up the stairs and there is a beautiful lookout that a lot of people miss. This is the lookout. It's not high, but once you go up from like the street level, you have a beautiful, beautiful view over the city and it is free. And the good thing is, is that many groups come here because this is one of the only places in the middle of the city that you can talk to the whole group. So if you will come up here, you will probably get also a free explanation about the old city and the Mount of Olives. by far the most special place in Jerusalem. The place I like the most is where I'm standing right now. This is an ancient 2,000 years old pool that collected water. It is inside station number nine in the Via Dolorosa, it belongs to the Coptics. You need to pay them five shekels and then you can go down these stairs and I just Love this place. 50 meters from here is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Hundreds of groups, 
thousands of people are there and here, totally quiet, I'm here by myself. And this place is not about Judaism or Christianity or Islam, it has nothing to do with Abraham or Jesus, just a simple water pool. I think that here, more than any other place in the old city, you can feel how ancient Jerusalem is. Under this video, I will leave a link to a post in my internet site with more explanations about the places and a Google map with all the sites. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please help me grow my channel and subscribe. If you have any questions, then leave them down here below. Now, if you are planning to visit Jerusalem and you want to know also the important history of the city, then you can always purchase my Jerusalem booklet. It is in English or in German, and you can download it as ebook or purchase the hard copy. Um, what else? That's it, guys. See you in the next video. Bye for now.